Good day everyone! I am Teacher Edith and I will tell you about Batas Pambansa 232 or the Education Act of 1982, an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. This act was signed into law by then-President Ferdinand Marcos on September 11, 1982, governs formal and informal education systems in public and private schools in all levels of instruction, and is one of the legal bases for education in the Philippines. Today, we will talk about the key points of this law, which are the National Development Goals and the rights of parents, students, personnel, the administrators, and schools. Section 3 of Batas Pambansa 232 declares these national development goals of the Philippine education system. Such goals fundamentally tell us that this law emboldens the education system in the Philippines and it enforces it to maintain an accelerating rate of progress, to empower each and every Filipino citizen as in the second goal, and to achieve unity and continuity even in constant fast-paced transformations. Section 3 also states this provision where everyone can get quality education regardless of sex, age, creed, socioeconomic status, physical and mental condition, racial or ethnic origin, and other affiliations. The statement that says the state shall therefore promote and maintain equality of access to education as well as the benefits of education by all citizens is further aligned by the constitution that mandates all must be granted with equal access to relevant quality education. And now, we are moving towards the rights of each stakeholder, which are the rights of parents, students, school personnel, the administrators, and the school. The two rights of parents who have children in school are the right to organize by themselves and are with teachers' forum for discussion and cooperation, and the right to access any official record directly relating to the children who are under their parental responsibility. These rights are mainly manifested during parent-teacher meetings where teachers can give feedback or when they plan with parents for any scholastic activity. Talking about these learners, they also have the following rights in Section 9. At best, what these rights denote is that students deserve quality education and its related services. Students, as they also own their records, have the right to know and retrieve them. Finally, they too have the right to handle themselves accordingly and form necessary groups that afford spaces for academic improvement. Section 10 also gives the rights of the persons working for an educational institutions like teachers, administrators, non-teaching personnel, and the non-academic personnel. The general rights are listed in four major points and the special rights or privileges of the academic staff are added to complement those rights. Section 12 adds the special rights of school administrators in which they are deemed persons in authority and must be respected as they do their roles correctly. This stipulation is akin to the provisions of Commonwealth Act No. 578 that authorizes teachers and professors too. With all those, we are reminded that teachers have their own lives apart from being teachers. They also deserve the rightful treatment and correct salary for their service and commitment. The last rights are the rights of the schools. The right for their governing boards or lawful authorities to provide proper governance of the school, to adopt and enforce administrative or management systems. The right for institutions to determine on academic grounds who shall be admitted to study, who may teach, and what shall be the subjects of the study and research. This means that admins have the power to run the school as long as they are abiding the educational rules and laws that are implemented in the country. Now let's look into the summary of the duties and obligations of each stakeholder. Parents must also fulfill their duties to contribute to the system. These three below indicate that they must cooperate, empower, and support the education system. This means that they must actively participate in the education process to help attain the national development goals. For the students, they are obliged to give their best to be honest at all times, to help perpetuate peace, to be socially aware, and to be responsible. 
I bet excellent pre-service teachers practice them to be excellent teachers. With that, let's move on now to the actual teacher duties and obligations. Section 17. The last few duties are that of the school administrators. Section 18. Academic non-teaching personnel where we have two. And that sums up our discussion for today. This has been Teacher Edith and thank you for being with me. See you next time.